I think traveling brings out the best and the worst in people. Now, I haven't seen everything, but I've seen a lot. In the last year, I traveled over 40 weeks, and I'm constantly in the company of strangers. If you're watching this, you probably travel and can relate as well. Maybe you've taken rides with strangers who pick you up in their Uber. From time to time, you probably sleep in your temporary bedrooms and share hallways and elevators and gyms with all kinds of characters that you don't know. In airplanes, there's nothing like flying. Airplanes, I would argue, provide the most intriguing glimpse into human character, especially at the end of the trip when you just want to get home. You've worked hard, maybe you've played hard, or maybe you had to say goodbye to a loved one, which is also hard. I never really thought about it before, but people who get on airplanes can be a little fragile, a little tired, a little stressed, oftentimes a little more than a little. I felt it myself. Sometimes the air can be so thick on an airplane, can it? Have you ever experienced that? Maybe the plane was delayed, the weather was nasty, you're running late and barely made the flight, and the last thing you want is to be in the company of strangers. It's literally the last thing you want. But there are no other options, so we plop down next to complete strangers. So close, physical contact can't be avoided. And whether we like it or not, we're gonna spend some quality time with them. We get to know them pretty quick. We're often alerted when our new neighbors have to go to the bathroom. We get to hear them snore. We get to watch them eat. Sometimes we even get a front row seat to the new launch strategy for a new flavor of Fritos from a MacBook Pro with a monitor so bright that it actually blinded me with its 4K retina display. Yeah, that actually happened. And out of respect for the passenger, I'm not gonna share that Frito flavor. Anyways, it's during these super strange, unnatural moments of intimacy that you can observe some heroics, character, Real character can show up during these times. Here's an example from my cousin, Mike Milstein, a very successful lawyer. So Mike was traveling on Southwest and runs into a situation and he actually posted about it as it was happening on Facebook. He posted, what's the right thing to do? I picked up my aisle seat and the attendant asked me if I would be willing to move a seat back so a couple could sit together. Now the alternative seat was a middle seat and in the next seat was a mom with an infant in her lap. Jackpot, right? So what does Mike do? He doesn't even need to think about it. He gave up his seat and did the right thing. He was praised on social media for his decision and added to his legendary reputation as a great guy who gives a crap about other people. For that, Mike, I'm making you the recipient of the Vi TV Mensch Award. If you don't speak Yiddish or German, a Mensch is someone to admire and emulate, someone of noble character. But this is the tale of two situations. And last night, I observed the other end of the spectrum. It was a late four hour flight from Denver to Hartford. It was United and I scored a basic economy seat that landed me in the middle seat of the very last row, row 39, seat E. I sat down and to my right was a young woman who didn't look so great. She looked a little under the weather. She looked at me and she said, I'm so sorry to tell you this, but I have the stomach flu. And I'm wondering if the person on the aisle would switch seats with me when they get here, just in case. Now, this was not something that I wanted to hear from someone that I was about to spend four hours sharing the same oxygen with, but I felt terrible for her, and I thought about my own daughter and how I would hope a stranger would treat her in a similar situation. So a moment or two later, a guy sits down in the aisle seat, probably 40 or so, and the young woman leaned over and said, sir, I'm so sorry to ask you this, but I have the stomach flu, and I was wondering if you would mind switching seats with me so I can have easier access to the bathroom. He didn't even have to think about it. His response was simply, no, I prefer to sit in the aisle, sorry. Now, I was pretty surprised by this, so I leaned over and I got his attention. He lifted one side of his headphones and he listened to me without making eye contact. I said, I don't know this person, but she seems pretty upset and doesn't feel very well. Would you consider changing your mind and letting her have your seat? He made eye contact for about two or three seconds. Then he put his headphones back on, didn't say another word. That was it. I guess that was his way of saying no. Now, for the next four hours, I got to know this young woman sitting next to me. Her name was Emily from Bristol, Connecticut, an avid gamer who was going to school to be a video game designer, and she was in Denver visiting her boyfriend. She was unbelievably nice and talented, and I was glad to be sitting next to her, even with her stomach flu. But the guy on my other side made my skin crawl. I kept thinking about how unfortunate it was that no one's ever gonna know how rude he was or how poor his character was. This was an example of having the opportunity to do the right thing when nobody was watching. Well, I was there and I was watching and I was so disappointed in his character. So 
he gets the second award. And this one is far less admirable. It's the Vive TV Jerk of the Week Award. Congratulations, whoever you are. Now, I'm no saint, and I'm not immune to travel anxiety and stress. I get it. But this experience changed my perspective, and I'm going to use it to remember that being a good person, a compassionate person, extends to the most stressful parts of our lives. And how we act when nobody is watching, and the sacrifices that we make when we know there's nothing in it for us, is definitely a reflection of what kind of person we really are. Lastly, if you're looking to transform your organization and make culture a powerful part of the strategy that drives performance in sales, supply chain, or anywhere in between, then call me at Vi and let's talk about how we can help. Vi TV, better every time you watch.